Hello and welcome to Walk In My Shoes, a show highlighting the positive social changes being made within our community. I'm Emma Dow and first up on the show we'll be speaking with Adam McKay from Helping Hoops. But before that, the crew went out and caught up with the guys from the clinic and this is what they found. Beginning in October 2010, Helping Hoops has been accepting struggling children into their free basketball programs over multiple sessions each week. Each session varies in location from Dandenong to Footscray and connects them with coaches and role models through 350 plus sessions per year. Um, a lot of his kids come from very volatile situations, you know, it could be public housing estates, um, they could be from you know, migrant or refugee families or, or you know, experiencing a, a disability. So. I think for us, you know, just being there on a consistent basis, week in, week out, providing strong values, strong leadership, strong uh, mentorship, um, it really has a, a profound impact on these kids. So, you know, we, we don't take that responsibility lightly and we try to make sure that we, um, you know, are just there fulfilling promises and leaving them with, uh, you know, things that can help them off the court as well. They help these children and teenagers learn essential social skills through basketball and by supporting the never give up attitude, they teach important values for life. It helped me ment um, physically and mentally to, to, to face the challenges in life. One session is run by Coach Omar where the kids have great fun training and staying fit with each other. This drill is about dribbling, learning coordination, and learning how to score. Remember because these kids are a community. And if you don't give back to your community, what are you doing? It's kind of like, to me, it's like having a child and not raising it, not guiding it. Helping to guide others, the direction of others, giving people, and helping to empower others, what, that fulfills you. That fulfills the soul. In order to raise the money to continue their cause, the organization hosts a yearly 24-hour charity shootout. Basically, um, 24 hours, people shooting as many free throws as they can in 15 minutes, so we divide the time up into 15-minute uh, blocks. And yeah, everyone gets you know sponsored by their friends and family to, to do the event. Having achieved so much already, the future looks bright for Helping Hoops. Adam, thanks for joining us on the show today. Thanks for having me. Can you tell us a little bit about how Helping Hoops got started? So a number of years ago, around six years ago, I was actually looking for an organisation like Helping Hoops mm -hmm. to get involved in just as a volunteer. And I was surprised to find there wasn't really anything you know, that used basketball in a more participation-based environment. So from there, we just decided to, to try and um, you know, just sort of see how it went. It wasn't any grand plans to, to become a fully-fledged charity like we are now. Um, it was just more of a passion project, and here we are. A, we're still around, and B, we're, we're obviously you know, bigger and, and hopefully better than we were. So um, yeah, it's been, been a busy six years. Great. So obviously, basketball being your chosen sport, can you tell me a little bit about the ratio of boys to girls that are actually getting involved with the organisation? Yeah, look, overall we've got a 25% female participation rate, mm -hmm. um, which I guess, you know, to the mainstream public may sound like not much at all, but considering we're working with, you know, kids from a you know, refugee migrant background, mm -hmm. um, you know, countries like South Sudan and East um, African countries, mm -hmm that rate is something we're really proud of. Um, it's taken a number of years to actually build that up and break down some of the barriers to participation that these um, yeah. you know, young ladies face. And yeah, we're only just getting started. Um, some of our programs is, are a 50-50 split and they're probably some of our more fun and vibrant programs to be around. So trying to replicate that across the whole board and uh, onward. What are some of those programs that you're saying that the girls get more involved in? So I guess some of the public housing programs, so dotted around Melbourne, particularly the inner city, there's places like you know, Fitzroy, Richmond, uh, North Melbourne, um, and this is where a lot of these emerging communities, mm -hmm. you know, particularly from a, a migrant or refugee background yeah. are living. Um, and yeah, we've just, you know, through having a constant presence and you know, sort of tackling some of the issues and the barriers with these young ladies, we've slowly but surely you know, found um, they've got more involved and, um, you know, places like Fitzroy just up the road. We used to see all the girls running around the public housing estate and we say, you know, come join the program, it's for everybody. Yeah. But they just wouldn't do it. But yeah. um, after a number of years, we, we cracked and uh, yeah. now we go down there 
half girls, half boys, and it, it's a lot of fun. So obviously you're working with people from various backgrounds, some that would be quite hard to relate to. What are some of the challenges, briefly, that you find yourself faced with? Yeah, I guess a lot of the kids we deal with come from quite volatile backgrounds. Mm -hmm. You know, they're living in places where sometimes violence or even drug use is something they witness. Um, the family structure or the family you know, unit is yeah. not um, cohesive. Um, so not knowing how their day's been, not knowing how their yeah. week's been, it can be quite volatile. All right, thank yeah. you so much for your time, Adam. We'll be back with you after the break for more Walk In My Shoes. 